Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of This Day in Hockey, Leo McGuire style. Yeah, I haven't been doing too many lately, punching out some other videos, doing some different things, and I actually want to start right off the hop tonight and uh, let any hardcore Philadelphia Flyer fans know, uh, many of you have probably already been participating in this, any one of a number of online video apps, Zoom being the most popular, but there are others. I've been on some others as well, but we're doing a big, big Zoom type of broadcast on Thursday night, originating out of Philadelphia. Of course, the link is good for anywhere in the world, but uh, the Flyers and the Flyer alumni are really pumping this up, and myself and Bill Clement, two-time Stanley Cup winner with the Flyers in 74 and 75, are going to be doing a Philadelphia broadcast with, uh, let's see here, we've got Dave Poulin, Ron Hextall, and Mark Howe, all kicking it off on Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern. There are three more special guests, one who never played or was associated with the Flyers at all, one who was very well known, well they're both well known, and uh, but I can't say their names yet, not at liberty to say, but if you're a Flyer fan, um, I will try and see if I can get the link and post it, and you can certainly uh, log on, it'll be available to anybody, it's free, just come one come all, like any one of those other broadcasts, and, and we'll have that for you Thursday night at 8 o'clock. On this day in hockey history, on May the 5th, go way back in time, if I was to tell you people that the Montreal Canadiens and Detroit Red Wings played a hockey game on May 5th, you would say, yeah, yeah, probably a playoff game. You know, you're probably going to be talking about 1966. Matter of fact, I will be later, but in this case, no. This game on May 5th, in particular between Montreal and Detroit, was not played in North America. It was played in England. Yeah, that's right. It was an exhibition game. May 5th, 1938, the Montreal Canadiens, Detroit Red Wings were in a series of games that was set up. These are the first times, it was the first time, I should say, that NHL teams played anywhere overseas, 1938. They went over for a nine-game tour to let the, some of the rest of the world enjoy a little bit of what the NHL could provide on the ice. And... Uh, uh, the Canadians won this exhibition series, five games to three. One of the games was a tie. They played five in England and three in France. And it's really not noteworthy outside of that, other than it was the Toe Blake coming out party. As I'm led to believe from what I've been told over time, uh, Toe played outstanding. He'd become a Montreal Canadian a couple of years earlier. And that was the forefront, really, if you will, of his... Of his uh, of his offensive contribute, contribution to the Montreal Canadiens. And as you know, in a few short years after, Elmer Locke would join the team, and then Rocket Richard, the punchline was formed, and the rest is history. And a very long-standing affiliation and association with the Montreal Canadiens that not only began in 1936 and had some prominence overseas on this date in 1938, but that segues nicely right into our next date our next year, I should say, May 5th, 1966, when, yes, I am going to talk, of course, about Henri Richard's cup-winning goal in overtime, scored on this date in 1966 in Game 6 in Detroit against the Red Wings, where Toe Blake figures is he was the coach of the Montreal Canadiens, and he did play a role in this goal. And you're wondering, how can a coach play a role? Well, exactly like this. Um, it was very early in overtime. I believe the 2-minute 22nd mark. And Henri Richard went in, and I think he was hauled down by Gary Bergman, and they slid into the net with the puck on Roger Crozier, and Frank Goodberry was the referee standing in position in that split second that he had to make a call. Told Blake, told the players, get over the, get over the boards, get over the boards. Celebrate like hell, and the guys went over in that split second celebrating like they'd won the Stanley Cup, and Frank had very called it a goal, and the Habs won the Stanley Cup. Was there a recourse to, no recourse for review at that time, but he, he could have disallowed it, and maybe might have considered it. You can watch it on replay. It is on YouTube. Does not appear to be any discernible pushing moment with his uh, mom, uh, momentum with Henri Richard's elbow or arm. I think even in today's rules, it would be a good goal, but you never know. In 1966, it was a good goal, and uh, I think Toe Blake deserves a little bit of credit for it. And, and you know, uh, uh, Henri Richard scored that goal. Dave Ballon and Jean-Guy Talbot assisted it. And I'd like to point out, you know, because a lot of people don't remember Dave Ballon with the Montreal Canadiens, and he came to, to the Habs from the Rangers 
ended up going back there later on in his career, but that trade was June 4th, 1963. You know, that was a big deal. It was Frank Selke Sr.'s last year as general manager of the Habs. This was during the summer. The, the NHL was going to hold their first ever amateur draft the next day in 1963 on uh, June the 5th, I believe it was. This deal was, I think, on June the 4th, June 3rd or 4th, a day or two before the first ever draft. And the Habs traded jean Guy Talbot, uh, Jacques Plant, and Phil Goyette. Like 15, 16 Stanley Cup rings traded away in one swoop. And picked up Gump Worsley, uh, Dave Ballon, Leon Rushford, and Len Ronson. Imagine being around at that time when that deal went down. And and because uh, people would say, what the hell? You know, like Gump Worsley was known. He'd been in the NHL. Now, the impetus behind that deal was Toe Blake had it up to here with, uh, with um, Jacques Plant. He, he just couldn't take his idiosyncrasies anymore. So the deal was consummated and then expanded to try because he just couldn't, they just couldn't come to a, an agreement in a one-for-one. One. Selkie made that deal for Montreal. And three out of those four guys ended up contributing to that Stanley Cup in 1966. Ballot and Rushford on the score sheet, I believe, both in Game 6. And, of course, Gump Worsley was a winning goalie. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Henri Richard, one of, I believe, six guys to score two Stanley Cup winning goals. The aforementioned Toe Blake comes back to him again. Boy, it's a Toe Blake night. Toe Blake scored two cup winners himself in 1944 and 1946. The first man to score two cup winners was Jack Dara with the Ottawa Senators in 1920 and 1921. And uh, then you had Toe Blake. Then you had um, uh, Jean Beliveau and uh, Henri Richard, who got his second in 71. Game 7 against Chicago, one of the greatest finals ever. Then you had Bobby Orr in 1772. And you had Mike Bossy, who became the second man to do it two years in a row. A lot of people think he was the first. He wasn't. Jack Dara with the Ottawa Senators was the first. And I think that's the list of two Stanley Cup winning goals of which Henri Richard was part of getting his first on this date in 1966. This was the day, technically, that the third longest game in NHL history ended. And I watched it, and I know so did many of you. The game started on May 4th, 2000 and ended on May 5th. 2000. And I watched it right downstairs here in this house that I live in in Osgood on that day. And uh, Keith Primo scored the goal at the 12.01 mark of the fifth overtime period. I know exactly when the game ended. It was 2.37 a.m. on the fifth on this date. And uh, my wife was sleeping. My kids were sleeping. Nobody was up. Just me having a few pints. I said, I'm, st- I'm hanging in for this one. Once it got past the third overtime, I wasn't going anywhere. But a couple neat things about this. Uh, not in a good way for Ron Tugnut, because he allowed the winning goal. But he faced 72 shots in this game. 72 shots. And in March of 1991, in a 65-minute game, he faced 73 shots, which is a modern-day record. He was a member of the Quebec Nordiques at that time against the Boston Bruins. That game, uh, probably well-known by many of you. I just love that. Stat. I love the fact he faced one less shot in the third longest game in NHL history on March 4th and 5th, 2000. Other thing is, Keith Primo scored the goal, and the assists were Danny McGillis and Luke Richardson. Danny McGillis, folks, played over 60 minutes in this game. I believe he played 61 minutes and 9 seconds. It's the second or third longest ever recorded. I think Sergei Zuboff has the longest around 68 minutes. I'll have to double-check that. But um, Danny McGillis played over 61 minutes. Luke Richardson played just under 60 minutes. 59 minutes. For years, I thought, in fact, he had played over 60. And I swear to God, when the first stat sheets came out and we were able to access them on the internet, I'm sure that it had him over 60 minutes. But he is recorded today as under 60. 59 and change. 59-15 or something like that. The other defense for Philly were Eric Desjardins and Chris Terrian of their top four. Three of their top four had Ottawa connections. I think that's amazing. And, and uh, you know, it's just, just an incredible thing. Anyway, the Flyers went on to win that series. But uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff on, uh, on this date. So, so that's it. Just wanted to uh, alert everybody to the uh, Philadelphia Flyer thing tomorrow night. And, or I should say Thursday night. And I think this may be it for, uh, for this bottle of whiskey here. Hold on. 
Yeah, there's no way I'm calling that a shot. Holy lifting. I was drinking those when I was seven or eight. Let's get this lot out here. Break out another bottle of Jameson's. I wonder if you could hear that just guggling in there. I said, oh, it's a big one. May as well kick her off in style. And we'll put her up there on the shelf where it belongs. Jameson's Irish Whiskey. So, um, the toast today to the six Canadian crewmen who lost their lives in that tragic helicopter accident off the coast of Greece, I believe. Not that just a few days ago. Absolutely tragic. Uh, I believe they were in sight of the boat, the ship, and went down. I haven't heard any explanation as to why yet, but uh, sometimes these things happen. And these men and women uh, serving our armed forces overseas, training missions and things of that nature, deserve every bit of uh, respect, as I always and often do as much as possible to honor uh, the military, home and abroad, past and present, and in this case here, to those six who lost their lives, uh, condolences, heartfelt to the families. And thank you for your selfless service to our country and our flag. G'day.